Hello, I'm Shannon, and welcome to Walls Woods. Hi, welcome to Walls Woods. We're gonna do something a little different today. Um, we're gonna try walking through a, a little bit more of an entire process. So these are sugar snap peas, and they're gonna go in the ground right here. But peas are a vining plant. Um, so we're gonna build a trellis today. I have these cedar poles here that uh, we have cut down around the property because cedar trees uh, carry a fungus that is harmful to um, apple trees. So last year we had a lot of problems with fungus on our apple trees. So uh, as a consequence, I murdered uh, about 30 cedar trees around the property. And cedar is great because it doesn't rot. So I cut these into 12 foot poles. Uh, you thought I'd use them for fence posts, but when we decided to grow peas, I thought perfect for trellis. So <clears throat> I think you can use just about anything for, uh, for trellis, but this is what we've got. So this is what we're gonna use. Uh, it didn't cost me anything other than a full day of cutting wood and, and finding a place to store them. So they're gonna work perfect. I bought some trellis material that we're gonna hang up here in just a minute. Uh, we'll take that step by step through that process. So this is the trellis material that we have. It is 48 inches tall by 328 feet long. Uh, so we'll have plenty of it. So it is a poly netting type of material and it'll be mounted here uh, and we'll run it down. So what I'm gonna basically do here is I'm gonna run a wire at 48 inches tall, which is the height of this. And I'm gonna run it all the way down and then that will be used to suspend this and then we'll come back and secure it to the poles with some staples. Time to get started. So I've marked all the poles at 50 inches. Um, the, the netting is 48 inches tall but we've mounded the dirt here a little bit. So I'm going to uh, run this wire all the way down around the same height at 50 to 52 inches so that it the trellis doesn't actually lay on the ground but it sits right above where the pea plants are gonna um, grow so now it's time to stretch this wire so we can get this trellis up Ethan come pick up this uh, spool I got it. I'm recording okay. hey come with me because we're going around the rows here. This is the same methodology that we use to make this, uh, to build this deer fence that surrounds the garden and orchard. And it works really, really well. We're basically going to be hanging this trellis like a shower curtain using zip ties once we're uh, got all this wire up. I know. It's kind of a pain. Ah, that's good. Go get me the pliers or cutters that are down at the other end in the. You can stop recording. Why are you recording? Just a process. So we've got the, the uh, trellis material rolled out here. I'm going to start by just kind of loosely attaching this to the top so we can kind of get this all um, stretched out here. So what I'll do is I'll just take a zip tie every, I don't know, five or six feet and I'll kind of just let it hang there for a minute. And that'll help me get this all situated here. And you'll start to see, I think, what I mean by um, hanging this like a shower curtain. Because essentially, this is gonna be able to free float on here until we attach it at both ends. But I've gotta get all this untangled and everything for being in the package. Okay, Avery. 
So I've got it stretched all the way down, hanging. Now I need to attach it on both ends. I'm gonna use some staples for that. Now, granted, these are a little bit overkill, but it's what I got handy right now. So it's what I'm gonna use. And I'm just gonna tack these in. I'm not even gonna drive them in all the way because all they really need to do is keep this from going anywhere. So I get these attached on both ends. I'm gonna leave these staples out so I can come back and pull them later easily. And just, I don't know, I think maybe three staples at each pole to keep everything secured should be sufficient. to the next pole. All right, play. Again, all this has to do, if I can hit it, is hold this in place and keep it, you know, a little bit tight. And we'll just keep on working down the road. So we've got both of the trellises installed now, and this one's gonna be just for peas. So we've got these that we started in seed pots about two to three weeks ago that I'm gonna transplant in this first section. And then the next two sections, I'm gonna plant actual pea seed. Um, we've got plenty left, and I don't think that I'm gonna have enough of these starters in here to fill up this whole row. So we'll have a little bit of a gap in between our harvest, which is fine, that way, we don't have to do so much all at once. So we're gonna get these guys in the ground first. So I'm gonna start by making a, a trench all the way down through here to lay these pea seedlings in. Now we've already tilled this ground a couple of weeks ago and we came through and we, we kind of hilled this to make sure that we have pl plenty of loose dirt. So this won't take very long but if you didn't do the prep work ahead of time, this part would be quite laborious. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take these guys and I'm gonna separate them in the middle, like so. And basically we're gonna lay them in here in a row. Ah! just like this, all the way down, all right, We've got a few more to go. Now I am. So we ran out of transplants pretty quick on this aisle. Uh, it seemed like a full tray of peas, seemed like a lot, but when you actually get them in the ground out here in the garden, it wasn't. So thankfully we had a ton of pea seeds left over. And so we're just gonna try this. We're just gonna, uh, we've, we've furrowed a, a trough down through here and we've planted them every six to eight inches apart. And uh, now we're just gonna see what Mother Nature does. 